Today, we honor those men and women who have served to preserve this nation's freedom and way of life, the veterans of our armed forces. Whether they have served in war or in peace, the veterans of our nation embrace the pride of service, dedication, and selflessness that made this country the greatest nation on earth. Please stand with me as we present the colors and the Topeka West singers sing the national anthem. Squadron 
air transportation. A1C Glassman has been married for 15 years, has two daughters, ages 12 and 9, and currently lives in Olathe, Kansas. Ladies and gentlemen, Airman First Class David Glassman. Thank you and thank you for having me here today. Um, as a veteran educator, I know uh, I've sent through several of these assemblies before and know how they go, and I know that I was, I was given 10 minutes to give a speech today, but I know the longer I talk, the less class you have to go to today. So um, maybe I'll keep this brief, maybe I won't. Um, and that goes for the teachers as well. I, I know sometimes they need that little extra break. Anyway, today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about leadership and service. And before I get to those points, I, I'd like to share a kind of a story, some of my experiences at, at basic training. Um, so bear with, with me on that. It does have a point here at the end. Um, so about two years ago, this time, I decided to follow a lifelong dream of mine. Every male in my family had served, and it was a step I had missed along the way. And so... I decided that I wanted to join the Air Force, the Air National Guard. And so I started talking with my friends, family, and everything, the thing that kept coming up is, why? Why, you're 36, you have a career, you have a family, you've got everything that you want in life. Why now? There were several reasons for it, but one of those pieces was the leadership piece. Now as a teacher, as an educator, and as a coach, that leadership piece is important for me. I, I feel I'm pretty good at it, maybe that sounds arrogant, but it's something that I thrive on, it's something that I cherish. And I figured what better way to lead and gain leadership skills than the, than the US military. And so that was one of the factors so, with the support of my family, I joined on, on May 9th, 2013. Had a little bit of time before I went to basic. I left for basic last, last September. And so I got a chance to maybe talk to some people about basic training. And everything that I was being told by the, the, the ones that had been through before was at age 36, you're gonna be a leader. When you get to basic training, they're going to say, you're the dorm chief, and you're going to lead that flight. And when you get to basic training, you have a flight of about 50, 50 guys. And you're going to be in that leadership role. And I thought, that's great. That's exactly what I want. That's what I'm there for, to go lead. And the other thing I was told is, at basic training, you're going to meet people from all walks of life, from all over the country, that you're all going to be different. And beware that each flight, there's always been one or two in there that aren't there for the right reasons. And be wary of those, because they can be dangerous. So I head off to basic training, and I get there, and I'm, I'm you know, excited and nervous at the same time. I get there, and I'm thinking, all right, here's my, my two months of leadership. I'm gonna jump in, and, and I'm gonna be the leader. I've got, you know, I'm 36, and the next closest to me is 20 years old. And most of them, a majority, are, are right out of high school. I'm much older than many of you sitting in this room. And so I, I get there, and, and sure enough, my, my drill instructor calls me in. He's got my file, and he calls me in. He's like, training class. At this point, we're not airmen yet. Trainings, we have to, we have to earn that right. And he calls me in, and he starts talking about leadership. I see your file. You know, you've got a master's degree. And I'm thinking in my head, here we go. He's going to make me a dorm chief, and I'm going to be kind of in charge of these guys when he's not here, and this is exactly what I want. So he starts talking about this, and he asks me, well, who do you think would be a good leader of this? Not only dorm chief, but element leaders and things like that. So I started, well, gave my reporting statement, uh, sir, you know, with my life experience, and before I could even begin, he's like, no, not you. It kind of blew my world. What do you mean not me? And he said, I want you to mentor somebody else. 
So I want you to pick the dorm chief, and I'm going to pick the elevator leaders, and then you're going to help them. And I'm going to hold you responsible, just like I did. I thought, all right, that's right up my alley as a teacher. So I picked the dorm chief, and he was going to pick the elevator leaders, and there was one, if you think back to that, that statement of there's always one or two in the flight that you might want to be weary of when you go in there. And I was told, you'll know when you see it. Well, I made the, the mistake of judging a book by its cover. And when I got there, I saw Trainee Williams, was his name. And I saw Trainee Williams, and I judged the book by a cover, by a cover and I said, there's the one that i got to be weary of. There's the one, he, he, it just, you just get a feeling about me. And so then it came time for the element leaders. He picked the element leaders. He announced it out. And Trainee Williams was one of the element leaders. And I thought, that's what a mistake. Well, that's a mistake. I'm not sure that's right. And I, I thought about going to the drill instructor and saying, maybe we rethink this decision here. But I'm really glad I didn't because drill instructors are not the most patient people when it comes to telling them they're wrong. And so I didn't, and I, and I went with it, but I was really weary of this. He was just a quiet type young man, just did. So over the two months, I mentored. But with, with Trainee Williams, I kind of sat back and I watched. I watched how this, this went. And some of the things, here's, here's what I was noticing about Trainee Williams as we went on. He was, he was a quiet man. He didn't say much, he led by example. And he would, every week you have locker inspections, your, your foot locker inspections. And these are big deals because if you fail these things, you could get washed back weeks. You could spend extra time in basic training. And he would fail his because he was helping others in his element get their stuff done. And when he would fail it, and the drill instructor would be screaming at him, very easily he could have said, well, I, I failed because I didn't get this done because I was helping others. But he never did. He just said, yes, sir, I'll do better next time. And then he had another trainee in his element that was really struggling, really struggling getting stuff done and time management. And so Williams would go over and make sure each night that he had his stuff done before his own. And when you're at basic training, sleep's important. You don't get a lot. So when you do get those opportunities to sleep, you take them. But he would stay up sometimes till midnight, one in the morning, trying to get his stuff done because he was over with training Kelly earlier, making sure he was set. And then... One night, it was later, we were maybe two weeks away from graduation, I saw Williams was kind of laying on his bunk. He was really upset. I could see he was really, really upset. And I went over and I said, you know, hey, what, what, what's wrong? Can I help you out? And he said, well, one, one of the other guys in my element here is over there crying. He's really upset and he's, he's just kind of having a really bad day. And I hate to see anybody have a bad day like that. And I wish I could help him out, but I can't right now. I don't know what to tell him, and it's really tearing me up. And at this point, I thought, at this point, it really hit home. I was like, here I was judging him early, and he was totally different than what I thought. And here's a young man, his background. He came from inner city Milwaukee. He's a former gang member. His uncles and brothers and parents had all been in gangs. Here's a young man that's completely opposite of me. Yet, here he is doing something that I came here to do. Lead. Serve. And through the process, Training now, Airman Williams and I became pretty close. On our, our last day, we had graduated, and 
after graduation weekend that Sunday, I was, the next day I was leaving for Fort Lee, Virginia, where I went to tech school at, um, from San Antonio. And I had to ship out at one in the morning. And so I, I just didn't plan on going to sleep. And I was too excited to sleep. We were done with basic training. And so there it was, Airman Williams and I sitting there visiting, just chit-chatting, my old friends. And I flat out told him, I, I said, you know, you know what, when I got here, I judged you. I, I, I predetermined something, and that was wrong with me. And I looked and saw that there's no way that, that you were going to be able to make this. But I've learned so much from you. And he kind of smiled at me, and he said, you know what, I did the same thing about you. He said, I saw a 36-year-old man with probably two broken knees that there's no way he's getting through this basic training. And he must be crazy to be here anyway. So it was, we shared some laughs. It was kind of funny to sit there and think, here are two people from two completely different backgrounds. I've lived my entire life in suburban Johnson County, and he's lived his entire life in inner city Milwaukee. And here we are, sharing the same goals, the same dreams, the same leadership, the same service. And what I learned from him is what I'd like to share with you today. Things that I learned is, number one, really good leaders know when to follow. I learned very quickly that I needed to follow Williams. I needed to back up and let him do his thing. 36-year-old teacher coach needed to learn from an 18-year-old fresh out of high school. Number two, with, with that same kind of concept, be a lifelong learner. Don't ever stop learning from what's around you. No matter what age you are, background, anything, don't ever stop learning. And lastly, the biggest thing I took from this is anyone can be a leader. Anyone can serve. No matter what your background, no matter what junction you are in life, age, wherever you're at, you can lead. You can serve. No matter what's going on in the past, you can lead. You can serve. Those opportunities are all around you at all times. It doesn't just have to be in the military. There are opportunities throughout life. You just need to recognize where those opportunities are and take them. Whether they're on an athletic field, whether they're with an ROTC or in the military. Maybe it's just in your classroom. Maybe it's at home. But those opportunities are everywhere in life. And I am here today to encourage you to recognize those opportunities and take those opportunities in the name of God. I thank you for letting me be here today. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of your day, rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you. 
United States Army from 1983 to 1986, and again from 1988 to 1991. served in the United States Army from 1973 to 1978. Angel Romero, who served in the United States Army from 1980 to 2003. Wayne Sherman, who served in the United States Army from 1981 to 2000.
a grateful nation. Oh. Thank you all for your service. In the 53 year history of our school, five Topeka West graduates have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their nation. We ask all present to stand as these men's names are read and a memorial torch is lit for each of them and to remain standing for the playing of taps. Hospital Corpsman James Michael Barrett, United States Navy, Topeka West Class of 1965, killed in action November 29, 1969, Guangdong Province. Private First Class, Gary Reed Parsons, United States Marine Corps, Topeka West Class of 1965, killed in action September 26, 1966, Guangdong Province, Republic of Vietnam. Private First Class, Rodney David Wilson, United States Army, Topeka West Class of 1967, killed in action July 3, 1969, Long Island Province, Republic of Vietnam. Private First Class, Christopher Lagarland Raymond, United States Marine Corps, Topeka West Class of 1970, killed in action February 8, 1971, Guangdong Province, Republic of Vietnam. Specialist Kyle G. Thomas, United States Army, Topeka West Class of 1998, killed in action September 25, 2003, decreed by Iraq. The freedoms and way of life that we enjoy today should never be taken for granted. They were bought and paid for by men and women who answered their country's call, many of whom shed blood doing so. Please be mindful of this as you go about your daily routine today. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Students, report to your treasure time.